Yeah. All right, what up, everybody? Chris Brandt with episode number two of Wide Open with Chris Brandt. That means actually a couple people listen to the first one. That's entertaining. Uh, I got my co-partner in crime, Ross Robinson, and special guest <laughs> up next on deck, Kyle Pulsifer. <laughs> You guys might have heard a couple of uh, announcements like that in our stories over the over the last season. So Ross, we uh, the first one kind of worked. Yeah. Um, so up on iTunes and Spotify right now. Uh, if you guys would certainly go subscribe to that. Also, this is uh, if you're watching on YouTube right there. Um, we're podcasting, so hit us up. Go listen there as well. Um, if you're uh, if you need some more entertainment, but uh, yeah, we can get into it. Well, you guys like our super legit uh, setup here, right? You can tell we just did this in the office with a table and some chairs. So uh, that's what that's what we're doing here. But um, so for episode number two, uh, this is this is kind of a fun one. Uh, we I get hundreds of emails uh, a season asking to come work here. How do I become a guide here? How do I? Um, how do I snowmobile for a living? Um, and you two knuckleheads found a way to do it. So that's what uh, episode number two is going to be about. It's going to be about how the heck these guys got a job snowmobiling for a living. And so... And I think Kyle's already making noise. I saw <laughs> that in a bad spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, this is a question that I think Kyle and I uh, get probably... Chris gets the question how to be a professional snowmobiler, but we get the actual question of how do I get a job at BBA or a job like, you know, what we do. And I would say it's arguably the biggest or most asked question we get. So, you know, just kind of, you know, take some time here to answer some of the question and how we ended up being so fortunate to be one of the few to do this. So. Well, let's first talk about, um, you know, what what a BBA guide is. Um, for those of you who don't know what BBA is, that's Brands Backcountry Adventure. That's our business. That's what we do. Um, on the surface, uh, through social media and videos and all that stuff, it looks like we just go snowmobiling and we have a good time and we're in perfect snow all the time and we're never uh, having to get people unstuck and we're just riding. That's definitely what it looks like on the surface, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that's about, about what you guys do, right? Oh, yeah. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's a you know it's a lot more than that um, you know to be honest it's not not really anything about how these guys were uh, riding wise um, but it's more you know this is a people business uh, so you know we we see different types of personalities and people from all over the world uh, that are coming here spending their hard-earned money uh, to hopefully become a better writer. And so that's that's a that's a big challenge uh, to make sure that we can cater to everybody's um, wants and needs and expectations of what they get uh, are hoping to get out of this. And so you know that's that's you guys may have thought I hired you because you were good writers. Um, Kyle, we all know that wasn't the case. Uh, that uh, I'm kidding. Um, but you know for for one, uh, both of you guys were clients. And that um, I can go back in the history books and look at every single guy that has worked here uh, has been a client. And that's not to say that all of you guys are going to start signing up for a trip and then you're guaranteed uh, a job here. But um, it, it serves a couple purposes. For one, it shows that you had drive and motivation um, to come here to, you know, not and and we'll talk about it. I'm going to ask yeah. you guys, you know, what what was your drive and motivation to come here? Um I know for Kyle's it wasn't to get a job. Um Ross, let's, well let's just ask a question. I mean, why why did you come yeah. here? What what was your goal? Well, you know, initially it's just watching Chris from like Grom stages, 13, 14 year old. I remember the school the school videos, those were like my that was like my bible. I was like religiously watched those to like figure out how to become a better writer and implemented everything I could and then uh you know it was this I always wanted to come out here and ride um and for a senior gift my dad uh sent me out here he put me on a plane 17 years old and showed up at uh, BBA land um with a slight thought of 
you know how it would be super cool to work here. But I was also equally just as nervous that I was going to get my butt kicked so bad I didn't even want to bring up the fact that I would. it would be a dream to work uh, for a company like this. So it was it was a lot of, you know, that, but just, you know, the, the motto is leave your ego at home, because, especially if you're a young kid. Like, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, and it was probably it, at the time in my life it was the biggest thing I had ever done it was like – come out on this by myself and send it. Well, and I think you just said something that um, some people do and some people don't. Um, your goal when you came here as a 17 year old, you left your ego at home and came here with an open mind hoping um, to better yourself as a rider. And it's and it's crazy, you, we get a lot of people who come here hoping to show me how to ride. Um, that's not how you would get a job here. That's not how you would earn my respect, I guess. Um, you know, it, it would be, I use the comparison, it would be like me going to uh, LeBron James's house, uh, going on his home court, and me thinking I'm going to go show him how to shoot free throws. You know, it's, it's, I would use that opportunity to learn, to become better, um, and to be just in the presence of, of someone who has set the bar. And, um, you know, that's, uh, I would say that is something that, you know, intrigued me initially about your approach and your attitude to it. Uh, you were, you were fun. Uh, you could take a little shit, uh, which was key, right? Because I'm pretty good at that. Yeah. Um, and, and so, and, and you wanted to be pushed. And so I could tell, uh, you rode with me for three, it was th three days. It was the three day. Yeah. Yep. And ta t this is kind of a funny story. So Ra shows up. Uh, I'm like, oh, 17 year old kid wants to get Western. So I'm going to put him on this sled. What sled did I put you on, Ross? Well, it was 2013. He put me on a two thought like a pre production 2012 <laughs> Polaris sled that had like a million miles on it, like just a couple it, Ben Arms. Yeah, a couple so. of Ben Arms. He's like, oh, this kid's gonna wreck stuff for sure. <laughs> so he put me on a sled that stuck around. Even I rode it, and then it stuck around two or three seasons after I worked here. Like it was a sled that we had for so long. Yeah, and well, it was called Chaos. It was called Chaos. Yeah. That's that's funny that uh, you would remember that. And and I mean, you passed test one, right? Yeah. There was no no <laughs> bitching, no griping, no. It was. Um, okay, cool. Well, I'll, I'll go do the best I can with this sled, and uh, thanks for giving me the clapped out one, but yeah. I'm going to go ride it. But what was cool about that sled is it was it, it had a 900 in it a year before that you had filmed on, and I knew that, so I was yeah. like, it was kind of cool at the same time, but I knew it had been tomahawked like 40 <laughs> times. Well, and that's what I said. I'm like, well, there's nothing that this kid is going to do this sled that I already haven't, so... Um, let's put it on. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll kind of dive into your story um, here in a bit as it continued and and how you became more a part of BBA. Um, Kyle, let's let's hear how. I mean, what what was your story? How how did you how did you make your first trip here? Oh uh, well, I didn't start my mountain riding career until pretty late. Um, thanks to the Bangasser family for bringing me out from my hometown. Got to ride. I rode for a couple of years, and then the year I graduated high school, I only got I only made a couple trips out, and none of my friends wanted to make an April trip. So I figured after watching the million YouTube videos since I was ten years old and everything, I'd book a trip, and came out in yeah, it was like April. It was about this time. Yeah, and it turned out pretty good. It was fun. Yeah. Well, and kind of the funny thing about Kyle, so you had gone up to Wyoming, you rode with Skinner up at his place, right? Um, yep. And then on your way home, you kind of just made a mad made a dash. Loop. Yeah, made a loop, came, came down to Colorado. And um, so I thought it was interesting, you know, you, you uh, weren't able to stay at the lodge. You know, financially, this was something that you know, you kind of scraped together, right? Yeah. And so, you, you know, you stayed down at the Best Western, didn't stay at the lodge just to save some money, brought your own sled. And, and um, I mean, so you obviously were paying for the trip, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and so... I remember, I remember Ryan. I 
was still kind of skeptical on it and didn't know if I was going to be able to make it happen. I didn't end up calling Ryan with my credit card until I was already driving out here. <laughs> he probably yeah. hates me. No, yeah. Knowing you now, that <laughs> does not surprise me. Um, but, um, you know, so I guess what was, what was kind of cool in your situation was, you know, that, that to me um, gave me respect for you as well. Uh, you know, this was something that you were doing everything in your power to make happen. Um, and, you know, the, the first thing that uh, impressed me about you was, I mean, we had a fun day on the mountain. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a couple guys, we got into some hairy terrain and we had a couple guys bend up a couple bumpers and we had an A-arm, right? Yeah. And, and so, you know, again, uh, Kyle's not staying at the lodge. So when we get back from a trip with a group, um, you know, we, we send everybody to the lodge, we do dinner there and, and, you know, Kyle's just hanging out cause he was like, well, I don't really have anywhere to go. Um, I'm staying at the hotel. Do you need any help working on sleds tonight? Um, uh, when you get back from, uh, from eating, I'm like, well, yeah, I guess we did crack some things up. Yeah. Meet me, meet me at the shop at eight o'clock. And um, so, you know, Kyle comes back and, and so, you know, already um, offered to help. And most of the time I'm like, oh gosh, help. Uh, you, you guys all seen the, sh uh, the signs when you go to a, a mechanic shop, you know, if you, if you ask to help, it's $50 more. If you try to help, it's $100 more. Uh, so it was one of those things where I was like, ah, oh, man, you know, I, I, it's gonna be a little late night. I, yeah, sure, I'll take the help. So Kyle shows up. And I'm like, well, can you, uh, we need to throw an A-arm and a bumper. Uh, do you know how to do that? He's like, yeah, sure. Um, and so I'll, right away, I'm like, oh, he actually knows how to change an A-arm. That's <laughs> helpful. Uh, by Judging by looking at his sled, I could tell that he had changed several A-arms. Um, so, so that was good. Um, but, you know, that, that was kind of my first impression of Kyle was, again, uh, fun attitude on the hill. Um, but more importantly, not afraid to work. Um, and that is one thing here at Brands Back Country Adventure that if you, sh uh, if you are afraid to work, then you um, don't belong here. Because as we were talking about on the surface, it looks like we just snowmobile. Um, but I can't count how many 16 hour days uh, we all did this yeah. year. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a grind. It's a pull. Yeah. And it's, to be a sweep guide or secondary guide at Brant's Backcountry Adventure for the amount of like the, the workload and to truly know what it entails. There's only like five guys who have ever done it, which is cool to say. So, but there's just, it's just so hard to kind of explain. And when you're like, oh no, we were, we literally went to bed last night at 11 and we're back in here at 6.30 this morning. Guys are like, oh yeah, what, it, yeah, whatever. I'm like, no, no, that's what we've been doing for the last month too. It, yeah. The seasonal intensity is just insane. So, I mean, let's let's ask Kyle this: What do you think it? What were you expecting when Chris offered you the job versus what the workload <clears throat> and what you actually do day in and day out? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I knew I knew what I was signing up for. I mean. I, I'd seen it. I was I was here. I think for three or four days the year yeah. before. You coming in as a client and seeing the shop and see the operation uh, gave you a, an idea of what you were yeah. going into. Yeah. Yeah. Did you think um, you know initially? So, and that's a funny story too because um, we were short a guide, and yep. you know McConnell's kind of like so what are we going to do? I'm like, oh, I got a guy in mind, you know, and right. You know, Ryan's been with the business for a long time. And, um, I had actually been talking to Sandy with about this too. Like, I think I'm going to hire this dude that came out for a couple of days and like no one's met him. Right. It's <laughs> yeah. only me. Um, and I'm like, I, I, I think I'm going to call him and, and see. And so, um, I ended up just calling Kyle and uh, over the phone, and I said, uh, "Hey, Kyle, this is Chris Brandt." And he's like, "Chris, who? You're calling me?" <laughs> uh, no, it. I, but I said, "Hey, I, I got a question to ask you. What What would you uh, What would you think about coming and and working for me next year in guiding?" And it was 
What what was your first reaction when I when I said that? Well, Were you expecting that when I called you? Well, we had kind of played phone tag for like a day or two. And then I finally, you you called me. We were between trucks. We were dumping out a floor. And you called and you're like, hey, what do you think about taking a job? And I'm like, well, that was unexpected. And I, I don't know, it was pretty exciting. Uh, There's a lot to think about right away. And I remember I jumped out of the truck when the next truck got there. And my dad's like, my dad's like, well, what, what was that all about? I'm like, Rock Chris Brandt just offered me a job. <laughs> He's like, bullshit. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, so, so, so that's cool. Uh, so you get the offer of the, of the job. You come here. And um, so, again, to Ross's point, you know, maybe in your in in a lot of people's mind, okay, cool, I get to go be the sweep guy. I'm going to be getting people unstuck. I'm going to be riding. I get to build all these cool sleds, all this stuff. Um, it's not exactly how it goes down. It's no, kind of kind of that's the fun part. But you know, talk about. I mean, you know, talk about just the lead up to the season. I mean, all the all the work there. Yeah, you know? and I well, I just remember. Um, loading up truck trailer all my stuff and like then I was like before I left I was thinking I was like man I met this guy I don't think we rode together three days and that was about it a couple hours in the shop at night and I'm going out to lift with him for <laughs> five months yeah, <laughs> yeah where, where am I staying yeah. like, what am I yeah, doing I, oh and then I got on the way here <laughs> <laughs> it took me like a day and a half to get here through the ice storm. Yeah. And remember, you're like, oh, I'll just leave the light on in your bedroom. Come on into the house. <laughs> yeah. It's never even never been, been in the house. That yeah. has been here before. <laughs> never been in the house. Never. He gets, shows up Here's at 1 30. He was, he was so scared. He slept in his truck that night. <laughs> I remember like, it's a, and then I wake up. I'm like, oh, maybe the new guy's here. <laughs> And, and 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 he's not. And I call. I'm like, dude, where are you at? He's like, I'm in your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you can come in if you want. <laughs> yeah, that was that was kind of funny. Yeah, um, it certainly is. Just, uh, I don't know. It's not like starting a diff- uh, just a normal job, because it's not nine to five. Like it's a life. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. yeah. You you you. It's a it's a life for six months out of the year, full full tilt. So yeah, Ross, you um, so you came in. <laughs> so so we had we had Sane and Rhino at the time. Yeah, and then you know we're expanding the business. We get another tour, so now we have riding with me, riding with Sane, and you come in and you you're gonna be my sweet guy. Um, yeah. And Sane and Rhino yeah. are, are gonna work as a team, and you're gonna be my sweet guy. Um, well, we just heard you know. Kyle's kind of first take. What, what? Uh, yeah. What was it like for you? Well, when when I left, I like, I'm pretty sure I had, I gave you like a resume or something. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about that. That sounds about let's, right for Ross. Let's yeah. talk about, dude. Yeah, how did you even get the job? Well, without going into like, without going into the super long detail <laughs> after I, because there is lots of crazy things that led up. Yeah. That, you know. Um, made it all happen but I I rode for three days with Chris um, and then left him a resume and luckily there was another guy here who Joe Duncan he he was here and I spent a lot of time with him during the tour and he's good buddies with Chris so I kind of got help there and you know he just just talking to Chris and he knew me a little bit and everything so it was great and um, we so I left, right? Tour's over. It was great. Amazing. And kind of, he's like, oh, well, you know, maybe we'll stay in touch over the summer. Mm-hmm. And that was just me being polite. Yeah. he was, yeah. <laughs> Looking back on all this now, it's like, dang, I really lucked out and things just lined up and worked out. Right. So I somehow was smart enough to decide all, I had some other interests and I was going to go to school for, you know, like emergency medicine. So I ended up going to Colorado Mountain College for what only ended up being a term, but it put me an hour from Chris. Conveniently. And conveniently. And we came out and like looked at the school and met with Chris a little bit and talked about some stuff. And then I was pretty much just like on call. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
sleds arrived and I kind of he had me help out here there here there and pretty soon I'm there every day and yeah it but just, at that point yeah. at that point I didn't it wasn't a job it wasn't it wasn't it was a an, job it, I was using you for help yeah it was convenient that you were there and you know you were still working with school and you know yeah. I was, we were kind of working around that schedule and so at that point I was like well let's you know bring him in not even internship I'm like just come help me do the stuff that takes a lot of time I don't really want to do but I need to do yeah. um, while I'm doing all the business side of things and so you know that's kind of how that happened um, and it's funny how I tell the story I right, tell the yeah. story so the so Ross says I'm coming to get a job I'm moving there and you're going to give me a job um, that's kind of how I remember it. I'm like who is this kid I don't even remember um, but again you know, in the back of my mind, just much like Kyle just committing to to the deal, you know, it was it was a big leap of faith for you. Um, I mean, you you moved to Colorado, went to school in Colorado with a chance or a hope of potentially, you know, following your dreams of, you know, being in the industry. Right. Yeah. And yeah, and I think I think maybe one thing that I executed pretty well and just by my nature is I wasn't like a pester mm -hmm. or like because you know like I said looking back on it I mean I could have easily sent you like three more emails and never heard from you again because yep. it was too much or you mm -hmm. know there's so many things that could have happened there um, but yeah I didn't even I ended up not even finishing that semester of school well before I was you know we were working here so much yeah and it's funny how how it <laughs> This is totally how my college career went as well. Uh, so it went to the point of, so you're helping out after school weekends, right? Yep. Um, and then it gets to the point where, okay, things are start, <clears throat> starting to ramp up. It's getting busy. And now I'm calling Ross. Hey, dude, can you come in here? We got some sleds coming in. We got this, this, this. And, and he's like, yeah, I, I got... Well, I got school Wednesday. I'm like, I know, but can you like still come in Wednesday? Yeah. Um, and then so um, it quickly escalated into, okay, the kid's doing a good job. Um, I can hand him a task and it gets done. And so then we started down the road of Ross working here at BBA. Yeah. 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 Then it just spiraled into madness. As it, is. it spiraled into as madness. As so um, okay, so we you know we've kind of painted the picture. It's not you know all Hollywood, and and you're not just snowmobiling every day. You're lots of you know we're really busy in the shop these days with with sled builds and getting. I mean, shoot, we have a fleet of twenty four snowmobiles now uh, with you know ten guide sleds, fourteen uh, rental sleds. So you know that's. That's a big job, and then customer builds now on top of that. But let's talk about the fun stuff. Let's talk. Let's talk about yeah. the writing. Yeah. Um. Uh. So you know, Kyle, you were my pretty much my full time sweep guy this year. Um. Ross, you know, you now help us. Um, and basically run and manage the mountain series with Andrew, yep. uh, which is a really important part of our business. Um. But let's talk about you know your first year as being sweet guy yeah. for me um and you you thought you were getting to go snowmobile every day yeah what is what is the job of being my sweet person it's a lot of work it's a lot of physical work and that's what i mean that's why it's so good to have i think a, a younger guy who is willing to just pull on skis all day you hang out in the back and you know, and then if, if you have that diversity in your group of riding level, you have to have that ability to, to step away with a couple guys and teach or take them kind of on your own if you have to as well. But man, it's just a, it's just a crash course. And uh, you're certainly not going out there to ride like... Epic, like riding with your buddies. Yeah, epic yeah. lines or ride with your buddies. I mean, you're riding trenches and just... Junk. Junk all day long. Um, but it is, it is very rewarding. Um, you know, it's part of now that I run the mountain series so much, I do miss that part of it sometimes because man, just go rip on skis and like help guys and do all that stuff. And you're not so worried about the big stuff as you are the, 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 the little stuff. So. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, another skill set that you have to have, and this is, this is kind of, um, I'm hoping 
and assuming that that, that you will learn this skill set, but you got to be a hound dog yeah. back there. Yeah. I mean, right? We got six or se- six or seven dudes, and we call it. It's like herding cats. Okay, so we're trying to gather everybody and go into this general direction and the snow is deep and people are just blah, Wild right? Up. Right, and so, um, you know, that's, there's gotta be common sense. There has to be um, just reading the person and the train and reading what I'm doing up front, right? Mm-hmm. Trying to figure out where, <laughs> we love the question, right? When the guide says, or the, the customer says, where are we going? Yeah. And you're in the back like, I don't know. Yeah, right. I'm just trying to get you guys up, up to somewhere. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to, to your point, you know, riding in the back. And, and so, of course, I'm in the front, taking yeah. the group. But, you know, one of my favorite things, just like you say, is, get up to the top, I five, high five the couple guys who get up there, and then I'm coming back and I'm wrangling with Kyle and, and we're, we're, you know, we're surveying the situation. Hmm, what'd you do here? How about that plan B, you know, yeah. all, all of these things. And so, and then, you know, working with those guys in the situation, in the trenches. And then again, you know, one of the things that makes us, in my opinion, um, you know, top tier riders is, riding in that stuff and that's i think that's the biggest thing i've seen in your riding kyle is that you know when it gets gnarlier you know what to do Mm -hmm. you know how to ride it so i mean you know get what what do you see back there in the trenches oh i love it so like we start out our day everybody's all pretty and in line we're all work all of a sudden we get we get to the trees and you can you can see it's gonna get steep and everybody is like there's a couple people that might take off, but everybody else is like, what are we supposed to do here? And they're just like, let's go, going up. And if people take off and it's just a mess. People scatter everywhere. People, one person getting stuck, another person driving right behind them, getting stuck right behind them. And then you come up through and you're just buzzing back and forth trying to get Joe, who's going ahead and hard left, yeah. trying to keep him back in. And <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. And then when you get guys are like where is he going and it's like well i can guarantee you he's not going down so when i take when i take a group in there you know obviously i am going in there to um you know ensure that we understand what being on edge is and slow and in control and having a plan b and eyes up and and as the sweep guy you know your job isn't just pulling on skis and rounding up people your job is actually one of the most important it is seeing what someone is doing incorrectly Mm -hmm. having the conversation with them when they when they mess up and helping helping them to fix it to progress them as a rider and so you know it's there's a there's a lot of things going on back there you're having to deal with the dude who's been stuck 12 times in a row now it's getting a little frustrated doesn't know where he's going feels a little overwhelmed yeah. right these are the times where you guys have to manage the situation get yeah. his head right um and then uh, you know and sometimes there's that conversation with me right hey yeah. chris i remember the time in grizzly hey chris yeah. dude if we do one more of those i might not make it back yeah. joe yeah. might kill me yeah. i rode through the pack because like, boss, we stop. We're all gonna die. <laughs> the, the radio call. Ah, uh, hey, Chris. I th- I think we should look for somewhere else to ride, as there's 14 people at the bottom quarter of the hill, upside yeah. down. Yeah, and and it's and it's tough because you know one of the things we talk about in the riders meeting is I don't always know exactly where I'm yeah. going, but for the most part, you know I can try to read the train. But it takes one of those little elements that that can really just get the group and discombobulated and in a mess and, and yeah. where, and if one guy trenches it, then it wrecks it for the others. And, you know, but those are the, you know, those, those times and those moments, you know, those are what really build the experience and, and build the adventure um, that we talk about. And, and it's something that, you know, the clients end up laughing at I mean, because that's usually what happens on day one, right? Yeah. Day one. Well, I have no idea how any of these guys ride. Let's go in this one little spot that we all know of and let's see what we need to work on. Yeah. Yeah. And normally it's <laughs> Kyle saying, we need to go to the open a little bit. <laughs> you got it. Let's go work on some stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, the sweep guy and I see Kyle does it really well is when 
like two or three guys are stuck and maybe it's towards the end of the day and they might be getting a little frustrated because we've been working hard all day and you know as a sweep guy you got to come up hooting and hollering and you know keeping that morale up and um, because a lot of times guys can feel like they're hindering the group a little bit maybe if they're Mm -hmm. struggling um and then they're like apologetic but we're like no dude this is what this is the mo this is what we do here this is all what it's all about so you know, there's you just have to be super positive and stupid energetic. Yeah, like you got to be running on jet fuel out there all day. Well, and and that's you know we we just kind of went full circle. The way you guys got your jobs wasn't the way you rode. Yeah. Um. It it was that I got to spend a few days with you, um, and I'm around enough people where I feel that um, I'm a halfway decent judge of character. And so, I mean, like, that's what was, you know, a little scary on Kyle, right? I mean, I met the dude for, like, over three days, 18 hours, right? Come uh, move in with me. Yeah, yeah. Come, come, <laughs> come live in my house. I'm going to trust you with uh, my business, my family, all my possessions. Um, and hopefully that doesn't backfire. <laughs> um, but, but you know, I guess, again, you know, it. that's, that's what it takes to be a part of this program is because this is what I always tell everyone is I'm not all that worried about the riding. Yeah. If you ride six days a week like we do and you have some sort of skill set, you will get good. Yeah. That's not the problem. The other the the main focus of this job is handling personalities, being a good people person, being energetic like you talk about and not being scared to work your ass off. Yeah. And it's hard to it's impossible to describe to people yeah. um what the workload is here well that that's what's so cool about like part of the vlog if we yeah. have to like capture that some it's like we're like 10 o'clock watching supercross building turbos like that whole kind of you know but it, it there but there still is no way there's yeah no, there's just no way to capture it so but let's talk about like let's quickly answer kind of the question Mm -hmm. that we get um maybe it's not directly how do i get a job at bba because how do i get a job in the industry yeah how do i get a job in the industry yeah and it can be you know guiding specific or just kind of in general okay Um, you know we can at a later time we could talk more about sponsorship or guide or that but just generally what yeah well let's let's briefly talk you know because the dream job is to snowmobile for a living yeah right so um and and whether that and when i when i think about that question i i think to myself doesn't exist it doesn't exist right i mean there there is there is no job yeah. snowmobiling for a living. I mean, I look at, you know, I look at the the few people that I know who who can do it. I look at myself, um, which I'm not snowmobiling for a living. I'm running a business. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That that's a little different. Yeah. I look at Tucker Hibbert. Tucker did a great job. Um, that he trained himself, uh, twelve months out of the year to go be dominant on a race circuit. Um, so. For four months out of the year. For yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I look at I look at Levi Lavalley. I look at Levi, um, who has pushed the boundaries of this sport in in his eyes. Yeah. Right. Um, and now now he is running a business though. Hundred yeah. 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 percent. There there is no sustainability without having a business. Something around it. Yeah. That, that's right. Um, and then you know I look at um, I think you know the next is. I think Brett Turcott is at that point or potentially close to that point of, and it's because he's at the top of his game in um, in freestyle and he's investing heavily in that, um, and this is his time to shine on that and and you know Andy's a, a backcountry ripper and, and everything like that. But one thing that is common about all of those people. Oh, Keith, well, Keith Curtis. Keith I was just gonna yeah. say it. there's there's one other dude, um, yeah. Keith Curtis, and. And you look at you look at all of the the guys we just mentioned, okay? Um, the only way that that is attainable is that they are the absolute best at what they do right now. Yeah. Keith Curtis, no question. No. Tucker Hibbert, no question. Levi Lavalley, no one's going to jump farther than Levi Lavalley. No, 
or all I mean all of his cool stuff that he's doing with Red Bull and stuff yeah and, and build it, the way he can build hype and all that stuff around these yeah. big events I mean flipping at the Super Bowl yeah yeah like so, you gotta so, be a wizard to pull that off yeah so there's I mean but that's not just like these I mean so I mean how do, how do you do that yeah. right how, yeah. so okay so those are the the five that I would say that are making a living at s- snowmobiling yeah. riding a snowmobile except it's not really riding yeah. Keith isn't riding a snowmobile he's racing a snowmobile yeah. Tucker wasn't riding a snowmobile he's racing a snowmobile you know I am thankfully riding a snowmobile but I am also running a business yeah. um, and the, the business side of things is what has enabled me to to do that I mean I couldn't just go out and ride and film no. right yeah. but the the big thing so again if the advice that I give to everybody and we'll have a, a, a podcast about you know sponsors and sponsorships and all of that stuff but the one thing that I tell every single person who ever asks either how did you get to where you are or um, how do I how do I do this is you have to differentiate yourself from everybody else and that's the thing that you know thankfully you know growing up with sled necks and you know just coming in at the right time for this backcountry style riding right yeah. wrong foot yeah. forward it was it was something that the industry needed to be refreshed no more all out in the open high mark stuff um, manufacturers started to develop sleds for us to be able to take them in off trail situations and actually do some things so that, you know I ended up being at the right place at the right time when the industry needed a change um, and I got to differentiate myself from everybody else yeah. Yeah. and either and work harder than everybody it, else yeah, exactly. well there's a little work that goes into that yeah yeah, yeah. oh and uh, yeah the other thing I, I guess I've been doing this for 20 years yeah which makes me old um, you you went X Games 12 right. years ago <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I was I was filming with Slednecks in two thousand and one was my first opportunity. Yeah, oh one, so not quite twenty years, yeah. but and, and and you know what I tell tell people or have been telling people is, um, you, you know, you you want to do this, but ask yourself what are the skills around it. Mm-hmm. Like Kyle is a amazingly quick wrench. Like he can spin a wrench so fast. He can build turbos. He can do all this stuff. Mike, that is a huge, that's a huge value, mm-hmm. you know, um, if, if you want to get into the snowmobile industry and kind of, you know, shoot for the moon, land among the stars, and you might, have, you might have just land in a dream job that you didn't think was really going to be your dream job. So ask yourself, what other skills can I acquire? And a lot of them aren't going to be th- through schooling or maybe they're like short courses or stuff, you know, like for an example of guiding, like... Mm-hmm. Be, have first aid certifications have Abby certifications have all this stuff done before you go to one of the many guide operations that you'd like to potentially work for so you know just ask yourself that, yourself that in general and then go from there yeah well and and I think I think we're about to kind of wrap this yeah, one up for sure um, it's 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 really cool to be able to um, you know see how our industry is moving and and to be able to um to to use technology and and you know i mean we're doing a podcast and getting getting to talk about all the things that we get to talk about behind the scenes yeah and that we get lots of questions about um that personally i just don't have a lot of time uh to respond back to emails so now we get to tell everybody about this so i'm um, pretty excited to be able to do this um and i we're gonna have a lot of fun with this over the summer um i think uh, one of our next podcasts we're gonna be talking about one of those five influencers in the industry we're gonna grab keith curtis and talk about um what is it like to um be making history right now yeah so that's pretty cool so stay tuned for that um ross give them uh give them some info on uh how to how to stay apart and, and uh, be involved with our program. Yeah. So you guys can, uh, if you're watching on YouTube right now, in the, the links below, obviously we've got links to everything um, to listen to the podcast, subscribe on iTunes, uh, wide open with Chris Brandt, uh, also going up on Spotify as well. 
And then, you know, what, what we would love is if you guys are listening, take a screenshot of you listening and, uh, you know, tag us in an Instagram story or something like that. We want to see that you're listening. Leave us a review, comment, you know, just, just stay in touch with us and uh, ask us questions. We're, uh, we're also going to do some, um, pull some questions off our yep. Instagram and, and answer those live or, uh, you know, so yeah, that's what I got. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Yeah. Fun uh, having you guys, fun sharing stories. Um, you know, the, the behind the scenes stuff is, uh, is cool to share with you guys and uh, make sure you tune in for episode number three coming up. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks, yes. guest Kyle. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Step into my circle with the opposite of Urkel when I pull up flying.